In this video, we want to look at weakening and strengthening. What is it? In many situations, we have predicates involving implications. And if the implication is true, that means every situation that makes E1 true has to also make E2 true. So if E1 is a predicate involving variables, any value that variable takes on that makes E1 true also must make E2 true in order for this implication to be true. So we would say that E1 is stronger than E2 if the implication holds. Or we say E2 is weaker than E1. So the question becomes weakening, strengthening. When is it the case that E1 implies E2? When is it the case that we have one expression that is stronger or weaker than another? So for example, if we're comparing the two predicates x greater than 0 and x greater than or equal to 0, is one of these stronger or weaker than the other? Well, any time we know that a variable takes on values that are greater than 0, those values are going to be greater than or equal to 0. And so x being greater than 0 implies x is greater than or equal to 0. So x greater than 0 is stronger than x greater than or equal to 0. Or we could say x greater than or equal to 0 is weaker than x greater than 0. Hmm. In this particular case, if we wanted to compare x being between 0 and 5, not including 0, but including 5, versus x being greater than 0, well, well, 6 doesn't make this true, but it does this. Anytime we pick a number between 0 and 5, if it makes this expression true, it's going to be the case that the value is greater than 0. So again, 0 less than x less than or equal to 5 implies that x is greater than 0, which means that 0 being less than x being less than or equal to 5 is stronger than x being greater than 0. Let's see. What if I want to compare x between 0 and 5, not including 0, versus x is greater than or equal to 0? Well, any time I pick a number between 0 and 5, not including 0, I will get a number that is greater than or equal to 0. And so, again, this expression is stronger than the expression x being greater than or equal to 0. But now let's look at this one. x between 0 and 5, including 0 and 5, versus x being greater than 0. Well, if I pick 0, it makes this true, but not this. So this is not stronger than x being greater than 0. On the other hand, if I pick 7, it makes this true, but not this. So these two expressions, neither one of them is stronger or weaker than the other. Often what we're going to want to do is, just by looking at some expressions, be able to tell which one is stronger, which one is weaker. That's why we call it weakening slash strengthening. Now, um, there are some laws that will help us with this. Notice that I have an expression, and then I have the same expression. I could write this as x is greater than 0, or x is equal to 0. That's how I would read this. x is greater than or equal to 0. I could rewrite this as 0 is less than x, and x is less than or equal to 5 implies x 
is greater than zero and zero being less than x is the same as x being greater than zero. Hmm. Are there some rules, laws, that will be able to help me decide whether or not one expression is weaker or stronger than another? And the answer is yes. These are called the weakening strengthening laws or weakening strengthening theorems. It turns out anytime we have P and Q implying P, it's equivalent to true. Instead of using expression 1 and expression 2, I use P's and Q's and R's. But you, if you have P implying P or R, it's always true. P and Q implying P or R is always true. So if you have these special structures, it turns out the implications always hold or always true are always true. So, how do I know that these theorems are valid? Well, we could use truth tables if you wanted to prove them, or you could use the equivalent style proofs. And for homework, I'm going to ask you to perform equivalent style proofs for each of these. I also want to make uh, a comment that the first two, A and B here, are traditionally in textbooks called weakening strengthening theorems. C is our concoction because it works well in our applications. It's in a way an extension or, or combination of A and B and we want you to think about that and, and see if you can come up with A and B from C as part of a homework. So weakening and strengthening theorems are going to be very valuable to us. They are on the navigation bar uh, in on the edX platform and we will be using them in the future to prove our programs correct because we're going to need to prove implications hold. <laughs>